Stop pretending you're a police officer. That, and that's beside the fact you're wearing a patch that says sheriff. All right. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. I'm not a cop. I don't remember exactly. You said, I'm a Bernalillo County Sheriff's deputy. Oh, my God. What would cause a man to dress up as a police officer and start harassing people? We've touched on this subject before, but today is special because we dive into several cases of repeat offenders, or should I say, serial cop impersonators. We all know there are some strange people around, but it's even stranger when a successful businessman or a teenager decides to do something crazy like that. But when they go to jail and then do the same thing again, that's a new level of crazy. We start off with a businessman who's yet to learn from his mistakes. What are you doing? What the f does it look like I'm doing, dumb f We start off with a blast because this guy from Orlando, Florida is a real serial cop wannabe. His name is Jeremy DeWitt, and even after being arrested multiple times, he keeps on impersonating cops, seemingly just for the fun of it. Go past me! Go past me! Repo, take this intersection and keep this sh under control! Obviously, this is all a big joke to DeWitt. If you saw my previous video about fake cops being arrested, you probably noticed that most of them are low-key. They do walk around pretending to be cops, but the moment they're confronted, they usually back away. Not this guy, though. DeWitt is a brazen, obnoxious loudmouth. Most people fall for his act, but some are immediately able to see through his masquerade. Hi! How are you today? I'm good, how are you? You must have missed that it's 45 through there, and then you use the turning lane to cut through traffic. Yep. I understand you're in a nice car and everything, but let's be a nice little more car, mature the way you drive. It. Let's nice drive car. the right way are then. A, are you a cop? Don't worry about what I am, because oh, no. I'm a state agent, so yeah, well, what you not. need to do is make sure you're doing the right thing, boy. DeWitt gained notoriety in 2019 when he got arrested for breaking traffic laws and impersonating a police officer. The officers on the scene detained him and quickly learned that the motorcycle he was riding was actually stolen. He was arrested, charged with impersonating an officer, and then he was released on bond. Uh, Sergeant, my vehicle's not stolen, Sergeant. I can tell you right now, everything's being videotaped on my body cam, Sergeant. Okay, you're for sure. So, I have the registration for the vehicle, Sergeant. At the time of the arrest, he had an entire arsenal of police gear, including handcuffs, mace, and a baton. Luckily, the officers were smart enough to get a warrant for his body camera, and that's what finally sealed his fate. The would-be policeman was filming most of what he was doing, and he even posted it on YouTube. So now, the police had a multitude of incriminating evidence that proved DeWitt was a serial cop impersonator. FHB's in route somewhere from somewhere. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's at least get some speed. Let's get to Hey, stop your vehicle. Stop pretending you're a police officer. Listen, I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. What you need to do is figure it the out before you start talking. The officers also found out that he was a registered sex offender and that he had previously been arrested for impersonating a police officer in 2001. In light of the body camera footage, DeWitt was arrested again on two more counts of impersonating a police officer, but for some reason, he was again released on bond. In 2005, DeWitt had been convicted of lewd and lascivious battery involving a victim between 13 and 15 years old. The past was about to catch up with him again, but watch what happens. Now, Mr. DeWitt, you're here today because you're arrested on uh, an arrest warrant for uh, a sex offender uh, violation failing to register as required. Uh, you're also out on bond on five charges of falsely uh, impersonating an officer. The state is requesting his bonds be revoked uh, on his prior cases, giving the new law violation, continued pattern of criminal activity, and he also poses a flight risk. Even though most people would probably agree with the prosecutor, the judge didn't, and he decided to keep DeWitt's bonds, meaning that he would remain free until the trial was over. In 2021, he was arrested again, this time for carrying a concealed weapon. Don't reach for that firearm. Walk away from your bike. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Go down to your knees. Do not reach for that firearm. You're being secure because you're openly carrying a firearm. What? You're openly carrying a firearm. Oh, man. You would have thought this guy had learned his lesson by now. 
Not only has he not learned a thing, but he dares to argue and shout at the arresting officer, who's trying to ID him by removing his helmet. What are you thinking my helmet I'm trying to identify you because I can't You're see you. You're trying to identify me? Carrying a pepper ball, you already know that. I do not know that. That is a firearm. That is a firearm right now. Not surprisingly, DeWitt does not like the fact that he's being arrested at all, and he expresses this frustration freely. However, there are law enforcement officers who do not take kindly to such behavior, and this time, DeWitt gets a quick lesson on how to behave. Give me a lieutenant. This is not right. Are you listening to me? This Are you listening to me? I'm a deputy. I'm not an officer. You don't tell me what to do. Stop yelling at me, and I'm going to stop yelling at you. Do not yell. Do not raise your voice to me. Yes, sir. Do you understand? I understand. DeWitt is taken to the police station, where it's determined that he did, in fact, carry a pepper ball, which is considered a firearm. Pepper guns, like pepper spray, are legal for personal self-defense use in Florida. No concealed carry permit is required for their possession. The charges were dropped, and he was released. If this happened in California, it would have been a completely different matter. In California, all weapons that shoot projectiles, including pepper ball guns, are considered weapons. Wherever you want to go, do you need a ride? <laughs> Where can I take you? Isn't it amazing how nice you guys are? <laughs> you Thank you, let's go. Come on. So, DeWitt got the upper hand on that one, but I keep wondering what would cause a seemingly successful entrepreneur and owner of a security company to start parading around as a cop and continue to harass people. My guess is he just did it for fun. It gave him a sense of power, it was probably exhilarating, and it probably gave him a boost of adrenaline. What do you think? Do you think he was a menace to society or just more of a nuisance? As strange as Mr. DeWitt is, it's even stranger to see a teen wearing full police body armor and pulling people over. A couple of Oklahoma County Sheriff's deputies had the strangest encounter on January 1, 2023, after they received a complaint about a police officer pulling over vehicles and being overly aggressive. You're a deputy sheriff? Uh, well, I mean, I work at the sheriff's office. Okay. So, I mean, what? Were you a corrections officer for yes. the sheriff's office? Okay. Why do you wear a vest outside of the facility? The young man is 19-year-old Jackson Jones, who claims that he works as a corrections officer for the Campbell County Sheriff's Office in Knoxville, Tennessee. Supposedly, he just drove from there, but the suspicious thing is that he's still wearing his vest, even though he's far away from work, so the deputies start grilling him about it. It's just a little odd, because whenever I worked in the jail, I took my crap off, especially if I was taking a long uh, drive from Tennessee. Exactly what I say, man. If I, if I Look, I'm going to tell you guys the same gonna... thing. I have been pulled up with so many times on Tennessee and Arkansas. Right. Okay? They know. I have told them every that, single that time. That might be true, but... Now, Jones keeps saying that he feels comfortable in the vest and likes wearing it, and the deputies are not buying his story, especially because he still had his full gear on, except for the gun. He was wearing a black bulletproof vest with a sheriff patch on it, a duty belt with knives, a flashlight, and handcuffs. Obviously, the deputies want to see some kind of identification to confirm that the kid really is a deputy. You got any kind of employment identification? Dude, they don't give me that when you work at the jail. Really? You don't have like an access card or an ID badge or anything for the facility that you work at? I don't. I can, I can show you my bank stuff. Jones then proceeds to look for some paperwork, but the deputy quickly explains that it doesn't even matter that much, as Jones is not a commissioned officer. Well, you realize wearing the sheriff on your chest is basically impersonating law enforcement, whether or not you're carrying a gun. Okay, but are you commissioned to be carrying a gun and you have a rest power? I, I don't, what do you mean? I don't even have a gun. That, that's beside the fact you're wearing a patch that says sheriff. The deputy also points to an open beer container in the car, but Jones says it's his girlfriend's, which makes no difference at all. Under Oklahoma law, it's illegal to have any open bottles, cans, or any other vessel with an open seal containing alcohol in a moving vehicle in the state. This means that even passengers are prohibited from drinking while someone else is driving. Jones also claims that he only talked to one truck driver, but the deputies then decided to do this. You don't mind if I search the car? I don't care. Okay, cool. Step on out if you don't mind. Yeah, drop your cord there. All right, face the vehicle. I'll just check you for, make sure you don't have any guns or nothing. 
Jones then removes his vest for the safety of the deputies, who proceed to search his car. While they were searching, an interesting conversation revealed just how suspicious they were of Jones. This will soon turn out to be a well-justified suspicion. One empty bottle, one partially missing bottle, and then two more to go, and he, it was a pack of six. Right, just all kinds of red flags, man. I would not drive from Tennessee with a vest carry on. No. Or even a duty belt on. As soon as I get off, I take that yeah. off. Just, I'm tired of being in it. I hate get driving out. from Topgolf to my house with this shit on. <laughs> One of the officers mentioned that Jones' vest didn't feel like it had any Kevlar in it, which was also a red flag. So he decided to inspect it further. They then summarize that if he hasn't pulled anyone over, he wasn't actually breaking the law. However, the two witnesses that came by claimed that Jones said he was a cop from Weston, Oklahoma, not Tennessee. This was enough to tip the scale, and Jones was arrested on the spot. Yeah, I know I'm going to All right, turn around, face the other way. Put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest for impersonating law enforcement, all right? And then you also have a charge for transporting an open container. Oh, my girlfriend could pick him up all this. Uh, not at this time. When the deputies finally got in touch with Jones's supposed supervisor, Jacob, they found out that Jones had worked at the jail. But guess what? He was fired over impersonating a police officer. It seems like some people just never learn. In addition to the charges, Jones was given a $5,000 bond. Since we've already scratched the topic of teens impersonating police officers, here's another one. This is Brandon Wasinski out on patrol, and he isn't even dressed up for the job. Allegedly, he noticed this driver speeding at around 120 miles per hour and decided to pull him over. Little did he know that a real police patrol was nearby. The look on his face when he sees the officer standing behind him is priceless. I'm gonna talk to him for a minute. The reason that Officer Danny Enzo even stopped is that Brandon waved at him as he passed by. He noticed Brandon was not wearing full gear, and after doing a quick search of his unmarked vehicle, it turned out it was a private vehicle owned by the teenager, and not an official one. So the officer decided to investigate further. Hey, what for? I, I know, I'm under equipped. This is the first lie the teen uttered, but it will not be the last one. Brandon is about to try and wiggle himself out of this situation, but he's not going to be able to keep it up very long. Sooner than you'd think, it's all going to come tumbling down. Do you have an ID with you? I mean, this, is, this is all I got. I mean, like I said, I'm under, I'm under equipped. I was just heading over there to the courthouse. To the courthouse for what? To get my crap. Okay. Right from the start, this kid looks suspicious. If he was a real cop, he would have responded with more confidence and not as timidly as he did. He explains why he pulled the car over in front, but the officer explains that that's not the way to do it. Yeah, he was speeding, dude. You could have called it in. And because if you get into shooting, you're, you're right. All right, man. I, I understand All that right. it, this, for starters, I know this looks really bad. Right. This looks really bad. This screams whacker. Right. How long have you been on? About three years. The officer then responds that in his 13 years on the force, he didn't always do everything by the book, but that the kid should have been more careful. Then he does a background check on him and has him sit in the back of the squad car. Now it could have been because Officer Danny Enzo was so forthcoming and kind, or he just knew the game was over, but Brandon suddenly decided to drop the act. What's up, man? All right. I'm just gonna be straight up honest with you. I'm okay. not a cop. Okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be you get that badge from me. I bought it offline. Offline. Okay. At that point, Officer Enzo's supervisor arrives at the scene, and Enzo briefs him on the situation. Soon after, Brandon is placed under arrest for impersonating a police officer. As it turned out, he was just a security guard who decided to play cop. His vehicle was equipped with flashing lights and a police radio. He also had a Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office badge, as well as a firearm, which was tucked away in a lockbox under his driver's seat. On the ride to jail, he breaks down even more. So I need to lean back a little bit. Thank you. Can I excuse my wife? 
one hell of a thought to know that in about two minutes, I f***ed my life free damn good. During the ride, he claimed that he didn't know his wife's phone number and other far-fetched stuff, like he had been shot at, that his pregnant wife was almost due, and that he doesn't like his security guard job because of the management. Wasinski was charged with impersonating a police officer. He pleaded no contest. We can only hope that unlike others, he really learned his lesson. Okay, so you did, what kind of firearm is it? Uh, I don't know. Is it yours? It's, uh, no, it was uh, the guy that I was riding with left it in, this, in my truck. So is it, it's not even your firearm? No. Are you able to carry a firearm? I'm not. Why? Uh, I'm a felon. What you're witnessing is the arrest of Daniel A. Mitchell, who led the police on a high-speed chase through the streets of Albuquerque. According to police reports, Mitchum approached a man in the street, showed him his gun, and said he was with the sheriff's office. Little did he know that the man said he was actually an undercover detective working on an auto theft investigation. The moment he realized his mistake, Mitchum ran to his Chevy Tahoe and fled the scene. He was apprehended while attempting to get rid of his firearm. Put your hands up, put your hands up, turn around, put your hands on top of your head. Now, get down on your knees. Get hands on top of your head. Keep your hands right there. Every time a suspect is seen carrying a gun, the situation obviously gets much more stressful for the officers involved because they have an obvious threat, especially in circumstances like this, when they don't know anything about the suspect, who he is, why he's carrying a gun, or what he's capable of. Luckily, Mitchell was calm and cooperative, and the arrest itself went down without a hitch. Hey, listen to me. You have the right to make silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have a right to have an attorney and a hand with you during questioning by police if you show desire. You get on a court, attorney will be appointed to me at no cost. Listen to me, okay? Yes, sir. I'm going to be nice to you, Yes, sir. but I'm not going to play games with you. I've okay. been doing this for 26 years. Yes, you understand? I'm going to take my glasses off so you can see my eyes so you know I'm serious. Yes, sir. Okay? Even though the officers have the suspect in handcuffs, there's one lingering issue. Where's the gun? The undercover detective clearly saw Mitchum brandishing a firearm, and now they can't find it. This is obviously their top priority at this moment, and they have to find out where it is before someone else finds it. At first, Mitchum is trying to lie his way out of the problem, but pretty soon, he crumbles under the pressure. What's the deal? What? You identified yourself as a sheriff's department deputy with the sheriff's department. I said I called the sheriff's department. No, you didn't. We have it all on video. Here's the thing. Well, if you want to listen to me, if you want to play games, dude. Look, I know. I, pay attention to I'm me. High, man. Oh, I if you want to play games with me, I'm just going to book you for everything. Sir, I was high. Okay, Where's you're high. Without much delay, the officer switches to asking about the gun. He asked Mitchum where he put it because he saw him place something under the car. Once again, he informs the suspect that he's under arrest and gives him one more chance to tell them where he put the gun. Mitchell then tells a different story and claims that he put it on top of the car and that it must have fallen off. He also states that he was high, so he doesn't even remember what he was saying to the officer or why he said it. Uh, I'm high, man. Okay, so what happened, out. high or not? Just um, be a man and be honest about it. I, I thought that guy was stealing that car. I did, I seriously did. A car pulls up. The car was wide open, and I, he pulls the ball fast and jumps out, and I thought he was stealing it, so I, I, I don't even know exactly what I said. I don't remember exactly what You said, I said. I'm a Bernalillo County Sheriff's Deputy. Oh, my God. Soon after, the officer is informed that the gun was found and that it's a real one, unlike what Mitchell was telling them. He was taken to the police station where he continued spinning the story. He claimed that the gun wasn't his and that some other guy was riding with him. Anyhow, the judge didn't buy his story and was later sentenced to four years and seven months in prison for being a felon in possession of a firearm and ammunition. After his release, he will also be subject to three years of supervised release. So, there are two lessons he learned the hard way. Don't do drugs and don't try to impersonate a police officer. As always, we save the best for last, or maybe I should say, the weirdest for last, because in this one, everyone gets arrested. 
The incident occurred on September 1st, 2023 at around 3 a.m. when officers responded to a report of a traffic accident near Fair Drive and Metropolitan Parkway. Once on site, they located an SUV that matched the description they had. That's when they approached 42-year-old Patricia Smith and her heavily intoxicated husband, 47-year-old Samuel Smith. What's going on, ma'am? Somebody just hit us at the red light. This is my he okay? husband. Is he okay? Sir? He in handcuffs? Why is he in handcuffs? I can't answer no questions, sir. Hold on one second. Leave him there. 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 Radio, can I get a photo of my location? I have a black man with lacerations to his face. Well, this looks like someone in a real pickle, doesn't it? While her husband is being checked by medical personnel, Mrs. Smith is placed in the patrol vehicle. The officers approach her again, trying to find out what happened and who put Mr. Smith in handcuffs. How did he wind up in handcuffs? Sir, we just left. 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 Which club? Peaches. Peaches? Okay. I got you. Over on RDA? Yeah. I got you. Okay. Did you guys get into it with security over there? Yeah. Sir, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All I know is that's my hood. Gotcha. Say I'm going to grab your Appreciate it. This cop is really good. He's polite and straight to the point. Now, it's a little sus that he immediately knew where the <laughs> club was, but hey, we'll let that one slip. The officers then drove to the Peaches Club at 779 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard and talked to two security guards who both claimed to be with the Homeland Security Department. <laughs> what do you work for? Homeland. Okay. Um, did y'all have some shit up here a little bit ago? Male and female get into it with anybody? Yeah. Sure Left in a pair of cuffs? Yeah. All right. What was the story with that? Uh, they were just drunk. All right. And um, whose handcuffs is he wearing? Mine. He took off. He jumped in the SUV and took off. The officer informs them that the couple had an accident not far away. But what did you think of the Homeland Security guy's story? Does it seem believable that a guy who was as drunk as Mr. Smith could have jumped in an SUV? The officer also thought there was something fishy about this story, so he decided to check it out. I told you he was good. All right, here's what I want you to do for me, okay? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take your firearm off your side, okay? Okay. You got uh, just Serpa here? Yes. All right, place that in my car. I'm going to detain you for right now. Okay. All right. This man was later identified as Terrence Jacks. He was in possession of a vest with a police patch, as well as a Department of Homeland Security special agent badge, a handgun, and a radio. It was later discovered that he was not employed by the Department of Homeland Security, so he was arrested and taken to Fulton County Jail. He was later charged with impersonating a public officer or employee. As for Mr. and Mrs. Smith, they were both arrested. Mrs. Smith was charged with DUI less safe, hit and run, reckless driving, and driving on a suspended license. Mr. Smith, however, had an active warrant out of Fulton County. Well, it seems that Fulton County Jail got several newcomers as a consequence of the events that transpired in front of Peach's nightclub. Let me know what you think is the reason why people decide to dress up and pretend to be cops. Would you ever think about doing something like that? You know, just for the fun of it. And if you liked today's video, click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next one.